Our Computex 2019 coverage is made possible thanks to Corsair, Patriot, EK, Titra, and Viper Gaming. Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and we're here with Gigabyte checking out some of the X570 boards here at Computex 2019. Firstly, starting with the X570 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. I guess you could call it, as most people do with mini-ITX boards, a pint-sized powerhouse. So firstly, we have the, uh, the large heat sink on the back of it just to help with the dissipation of heat. We also have support for the, uh, through the X570 chipset PCI Express 4.0, which is obviously going to be uh, coinciding with the NVMe drives that are going to come out on the market. Now, with all their X570 line, uh, they have actually changed their PWM design. So with this, we do have eight phases. They're not going with couplers anymore. So uh, that should provide, obviously, a lot cleaner, stable power. Uh, we do have other features like onboard Wi-Fi 6, so 802.11ax, as well as Bluetooth, uh, and all the usual stuff that you'd expect for audio and things like that. Now, one of the key parts with the uh, mini ITX board is instead of having a plastic shroud that kind of merges into the I.O., we actually have a full kind of heat sink, metal heat sink design, which is obviously going to help dissipate the heat. Uh, we do have the fan on there because all X570 boards do have a fan for the chipset, apart from one, which I will show you in a little bit. Uh, obviously connections on the back, plenty of USB, the Wi-Fi connections, HDMI and DisplayPort as well. Moving on to the next board, so uh, we have this one here which is the X570 Aorus Elite, full size ATX motherboard, uh, 14 phase design on this one, uh, 8 uh, pin power connector on the top, uh, 2 uh, PCI Express X16 slots, again support for the uh, new NVMe drives that are going to be coming out and just a general kind of shake up on the design. So they've actually kept all the models the same uh, when comparing to Z390, uh, just obviously for the X570 uh, chipset. Moving on further down the line, we have the X570 Aorus Pro. So with this one, again, we have a 14 phase uh, digital VRM design, uh, advanced thermal solution, slightly different kind of, you know, uh, design with the heat sinks and everything that move over to the IO. They're sticking still with the Fins Array heat sink that we've seen before on other boards. Uh, but again, we have this large kind of uh, heat sink cooler with an active fan solution, which we are told will be kind of, you know, variably controlled and you can control it and it will control itself but you won't actually be able to turn it off. But maybe that's something that might come at a later date with a BIOS update. Further down the line, we have the X570 Aorus Ultra. So uh, again, 14 phase PWM design. We have an eight pin and a four pin on this one, just you know, to give a little bit more power to it. Uh, four DIMM slots. We have three uh, X16 slots, three NVMe um, uh, M.2 slots on there as well, and uh, plenty of SATA ports to keep you going. Probably one of what's going to be you know, a good value kind of based on performance board as well as getting lots of good features. Further down the line, we've got the X570 Aorus Master, which has this really nice kind of addressable RGB. Both of them actually do. Uh, addressable RGB down here as well on the ESS Sabre Hi-Fi. Uh, we've got again three M.2 slots, there is an active fan under here, but uh, a slightly different kind of style to maybe some of the lower end boards. Uh, other than that, yeah, the usual stuff as well, Wi-Fi 6 across the whole range on these. But the one that I really, really want to talk about is this one, which is the X570 Aorus Extreme. Obviously, we have had the Aorus Extreme before on like Z390. The design has gone ever so slightly different. So with this one, it is the only board on X570 from Gigabyte that doesn't have an active fan solution. So basically, it has this large encompassing heatsink area, so therefore, it just doesn't need it. Obviously, uh, it looks premium, it's got a lot of premium features, but some of the design choices on this have been really, really good. So we've got these huge power and reset buttons on there just to kind of, you know, give you on the fly kind of troubleshooting um, abilities when you're doing overclocking, maybe on a, on a test bench, that kind of thing. But the things that I really like is down the bottom, if you're like me and you do a lot of builds, sometimes you're not going to want to connect some front panel headers. So you've got the ability to basically hide it, clean up the look a little bit. But the main thing is down the side. All of the connections are all sitting down the side. So we've got our 24 pin, we've got you know, fan connectors, we've got USB. As we know in sort of the past, especially with an EATX motherboard, it's been quite tricky sort of you know, getting them cables rooted for the grommets and kind of getting the right angle on it. This just kind of alleviates that by having it at a right angle and parallel to the board. This is probably the one that I'm, I guess, looking forward to the most purely because it is going to be a beast. It has got a direct 16 phase design. So they have kind of, you know, changed it up a little bit, I guess, from Z390. And there's a very good reason why. I'm just really eager to see what the performance is going to be like, because it's going to be extreme. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And check out the rest of our Computex 2019 coverage here in Taipei, Taiwan. See you later, guys. Bye bye.